You're clear of the crane. Roger. Clear the stern. Roger. Vehicles over the side, going down. Roger. This is an audio slate for dive 1890. UTC time is 040924. Mark.
Audio check. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. How are we doing? Pilots, how are we doing? We're doing great. Did you notice the little treat I left for you guys in the back row there? Uh, that was you. That was very, you very are nice. So sweet. Thank you. Uh, That's Thank my you. name on it. Worst selection of Canadian candy I could offer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Trevor. Thank you. Thanks. Um, it's a glowing review. Uh huh. I think so. <laughs> Especially after the tryptophan induced semi coma from our wonderful chefs on board, <laughs> one of whom's whose birthday it was. Yeah, Alex had a birthday. Yeah. Yeah, happy birthday to Alex. So, good afternoon, everyone uh, watching us on NautilusLive.org, our YouTube channel, following us on Twitter and uh, Instagram. Thank you for being with us. We're about to start our seventh dive on um, Don Quixote Sea Mount in Papahanaumokuakea. Did I say it right? No. <laughs> it's, it's getting there. Pa yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, Papahanaumokuakea. Okay, yeah, that's okay. it. <laughs> you getting it. A marine. Um, national monument yes uh, we are very excited about this dive we are coming back to uh, this seamount because we saw a very abundant um very abundant communities of corals and sponges so we are very excited about this uh chris can you tell us a little more about our dive chris you're not on spl nope as a heads up you turn your mic on that's um, my fault. I had to turn oh, off all yeah. the SPLs back there to get rid of the hot mic. There. Yeah, you're on now. Am I on now? Yes. Yep. Oh, okay. <laughs> Some people probably would want that to remain off, but we'll see. No, no. The f no. Your fans so, are ready to listen to Chris. Well, you know, uh, uh, the other day on this site, I guess we just decided that we hadn't seen enough sponges and corals. So Never we, just, we just needed to see a few more. That's not quite right. So I better <laughs> give the true story. We think uh, just looking at the topography, which I study quite a bit after the dive because I'm always trying to figure out how to predict these areas. I think we came pretty close to defining the upper boundary of that really spectacular community that we dove on. What, a couple of days ago now? or I don't Yeah, know. two days, a yeah. day and a half. And we may have landed at the lower boundary because there's definitely a change in topography below it. But we need to be sure because these communities are so important, we ne need to really nail down exactly what type of topography was obviously suitable mm. for something mm -hmm. like that to develop. So we made a decision and we looked at our timing and we think we can add this extra dive and not really lose any more 
on this trip because we had some buffer days built into the schedule. A couple of them were just burning one buffer day, that's all. Yeah. And so um, we're diving today on the same site, but we're going about one kilometer further down slope from our start point. And then we're going to transect up toward the start point of that dive and intersect it and overlap it by maybe about 100 to 200 meters to make sure we have overlapped it. And then that's where we're at. So okay. that's the point of the dive. So it's going to be a little bit late, uh, deeper, slightly deeper than it was. We may wind up landing on a nodule field. Ooh, a nodule field. That's yeah, so we might try to grab some nodules for Beth, too, because it's kind of a little flatter area, and then it starts up slope a little bit toward our previous start point. So what did we what did we cover we covered from about 1900 and up last time? Uh, let's see. I think so. We started, let me get this light on. How do you turn this thing on? Oh, I think, there we go. Got it. Okay. Um, let's see. Today we're starting at 2140 meters or 2140. And the other day we started at just under 2000, I think, and transected up to about, what was it, 1800 some odd or something like that. Oh, okay. So it wasn't particularly steep topography. You know, it was gradually uphill. So um, I'm pretty excited about it because uh, we actually get a chance to, it, with this particular community, to actually define its bounds, which is extremely important in my mind. Yeah. So it's, it's a bit science-y, but... Uh, that's what we're here for. We're all about science-y. Yeah. So that's what we're doing. Hey, back row, if you guys are interested, we do have the dive tracks and um, bathymetry and all that in a scene if you want to show people where we were. Yeah, absolutely. That wonderful. Yeah, Ooh. thank you, Aaron. Yeah, I'll just have to work with video to get the screen switched over. Thanks, Aaron. Okay. I can do that. Which one is it? Yeah, these these uh, seamounts have really, really interesting what am I topography looking for? that we're exploring. Uh, they're... This one, last one, is was it Eo? Is it right? Oh, yeah, that's the one. Eo, it's a flat top seamount. For those who may have forgotten, it means that it was at the surface at some point in the last eighty to one hundred million years, and uh, that's why it has a flat top. So I think what you're going to see today is probably some transitional area where if we do land on we're landing on a bit of a flat spot right here in the topography and then we're going to transect up not a particularly steep slope but a gradual slope mm -hmm. and that's hard according so I've, I've brought up some what they call backscatter data that i fortunately brought along with me backscatter is how sound is interacting with the substrate and it can tell you how hard or soft a substrate is this is from a survey back in I'm going to get this wrong, 1980, 1990, oh, wow. called the, the Gloria Side Scan Surveys throughout the Hawaiian Islands and elsewhere. And I clipped out that data for this particular area, and I looked at it. And where we're landing here is sort of hard, which it could be if there were nodules there. But then when we go up the slope, then it's harder. You can clearly see that. So we may get into some corals up that slope. Cool. But probably not as many as we saw yesterday until we actually get up further. I think oh. we've got some beautiful is it, is bathymetric it? imagery coming up on sat feed three. Um, if you look at the quad on satellite feed three, so PC1 for people who have that back there, um, it's the map that Aaron's talking about. It really is beautiful, actually. Like, it's really Let cool. me know if you're having problems accessing it back row. Yeah, we could, I'm looking over at, um, um, <coughs> Aphrodite's monitor, she's got it up and she's showing it and I'm seeing it over. And I don't know okay. actually how to switch to my quad screen in front of me. but um, I it can does do it for you. Oh, okay. Yeah. One second. Is Just that our current dive? You can show. Uh, so our current dive is the, the purple. Oh. oh, and the previous one was the other purple. Yeah, that's the one we finished. So you can see right the, on. the yeah. drop down, Burke's trail, and then going back up. Right, because we're trying to find the lower limit of this stuff, correct? Correct. Yep. Great. 
Yeah, so with that one, with the different colors of bathymetry, that's just showing um, we are diving on Don Quixote, which was mostly mapped by Okeanos Explorer. So the kind of more pastel colors were the existing data. And then when we finished up the dive a few days ago, we ran a track line out over uh, specifically to cover some gaps in their data. So there was that kind of big gap there. And we had, because we were running south to get out of weather, we had the opportunity to, to cover that, that gap in their data. So now it's nice and continuous. Nice. nice. It looks really good. Yeah, it looks marvelous. And I think everybody can see why we map before we dive. I mean, it just reveals so much information to you that you can plan out your dive site. You can see where you are and how far you can go and so forth. It's yeah. an absolutely critical part to any type of cruise like this. If you if you are watching, go on quad and take a look because it's it's really beautiful, actually. Yeah, it really is. This is such a massive seamount. I feel like yeah. we could just be diving on this one. I know, <laughs> the entire like, cruise. that's yeah. an entire dive track. It and looks it's like so a little small. Squiggle. Yeah, it's just wow. a wee little spot, and you know that was what twelve hours. I can't even remember. Yeah. That's wow. between that those was purple, twelve hours. Purple, the, yeah, the, the white pyramids. lines. The white line, yeah. Oh, the white line, oh. yeah. The, the vertical ones are just the up and down when we were sending and descending. So we oh, ascended, you know, on the lower white line and then ran along the bottom and then ascended to the, the higher white line. That's cool. The mapping software so plots our the viewers, USB pings. Our viewers can see this well, colorful map, right? We just take it from yeah, the on quad yeah. three, on uh, quad on their nautiluslive.org or channel three. If you want to look on channel three on the main page. Yeah, so it'll be see. in that bottom left hand corner. <laughs> This is really won wonderful, Aaron. I wonder I wonder if this is something we could do in this blue water phase of every dive, kind of showing viewers, giving them a real treat to see exactly what the dive site looks like. Is that is that would that be possible or am I asking too much? Oh no, we're totally ready for it. It's easy. Easy peasy. Okay. Oh you have all the the whole story so far in here oh. too. So it's pretty Let's cool. Go over there. Let's see yeah. some of our early dives. Um if if I turn them on, you can see uh -huh. them. This is really cool. How's this? Uh, how's this stuff doing? How are these things going? Yeah, and that was ha uh, Haheo. Yeah, drums. so Haheo, we had two dives as well on the southern ridge. Yeah. Didn't produce tons of stuff, <laughs> but then I think this one did produce some interesting corals and things up mm -hmm. here. If that I that was remember. Coral Canyon on Haheo dive. Yeah, it was yeah I think also. so. Yeah. yeah. Which one was that? The north or the south? The, the north one. So up here. Yeah. Yeah. So once again, uh, a really sharp ridge, and that's what we are targeting on this cruise. You may ask why. Well, these sharp rig ridges basically, in our opinion, offer the best of all worlds because we do not want to get too close to the cap or the flat top of the seamount because that's carbonate, we assume. Manganese crusted carbonate, and it's useless for dating purposes. There's, you know, and the uh, the geologists on board they have to have rocks that are basalt and have certain types of crystals in here in order to be able to determine the age of the seamount. If we go down on these ridges, a lot of the really optimal rocks have persisted. A lot of the softer rocks have eroded away, and that's what creates sort of these landslide um, sections in between these ridges. But those ridges are very durable and they remain. And also, these are areas where you had active volcanism oftentimes and you can find pillow lavas up there mm -hmm. um, in addition these ridges seem to uh, have a you know in, if you get the right ridge and we're still trying to figure that out you can find wonderful communities of animals on these it seems like it's a very optimal habitat because I think the, it accelerates current flow mm -hmm. and these are a lot of filter feeding animals the sponges and corals we saw and they like it when the curls go the currents going fast because they can eat faster. They can eat more. There's they more food more. available. Thanksgiving every day when the ridge there. Right. <laughs> so Aaron, the nav team creates these maps during the mapping portion, correct? Yeah. What exactly, how, how do you do that in uh, layman's terms? <laughs> well, um, we acquire the data uh, with SIS. That's the Cosberg software that displays on the screen. And then this processing suite, we use the QPS processing suite, which is Chimera is the Processing software, and then this is Flatermouse. This is just visualization software, and it just 
it's just basically taking XYZ data, so latitude, longitude, and depth, making a grid out of it, and then projecting it in 3D. But it's software, it's it's the specialty of like the formats and stuff that not every software can read. So you can't take a Consberg file into just any old geospatial software, so you need kind of a, a hydrographic-specific software. But then it's pretty straightforward. It just yeah, reads it in as XYZ data, puts it in 3D space, and, and something like Flatrance other file type. So at the um, at the end of a dive, the science team does these kind of automated dive reports, and one of those is the HERC position, right? So it just comes in as a text file. You can build up pretty pretty cool complex scenes 